Welcome to this audio presentation on key public health initiatives in India. Today we will delve into some vital initiatives addressing sanitation, child protection, women's safety, social evils and health concerns. Let's begin. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Our first topic is the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, a significant initiative launched on 2nd October 2014. This mission has a clear objective the construction of individual sanitary latrines for household use by prioritizing personal hygiene the initiative aims to enhance the overall health and well-being of the population civic sense a key principle underlying the swachh bharat abhiyan is civic sense having consideration for our fellow human beings civic sense goes beyond individual actions It involves a collective responsibility towards maintaining cleanliness and promoting a healthier living environment. Launch date Marking a historic moment, the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan was inaugurated on 2nd October 2014. This date holds significance as it coincides with the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, a pioneer in India's struggle for independence and a symbol of cleanliness and simplicity. Social Security Shifting our focus to the broader spectrum of social security, it encompasses three main types: social insurance, providing financial protection and assistance during contingencies such as illness, disability, or unemployment; services, offering access to essential services like healthcare, education, and housing to ensure a basic standard of living; basic security, ensuring a fundamental level of protection against poverty. hunger and other social vulnerabilities in conclusion the swachh bharat abhiyan serves as a testament to india's commitment to improving public health through sanitation initiatives simultaneously understanding and implementing various forms of social security contribute to fostering a more secure and equitable society mission indradhnur stands as a beacon of health orchestrated by the government of india This initiative is a comprehensive drive to ensure the well-being of the nation's children and pregnant women through immunization. Ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of Mission Indradhnush is ambitious yet profoundly significant to guarantee full immunization with all available vaccines for children up to 2 years of age and pregnant women. This strategic approach aims to build a robust defense against preventable diseases. intensified mission indradhnush recognizing the need for targeted efforts an intensified phase of mission indradhnush has been launched this phase specifically targets low performing areas in selected districts and urban regions the focus extends to unserved or low coverage pockets particularly in sub centers and urban slums housing migratory populations urban focus and national urban health mission The mission does not overlook urban settlements. With a dual focus on urban areas and cities identified under the National Urban Health Mission, Mission Indradhnush strives to bridge health gaps in densely populated urban environments. Mission Indradhnush is a holistic initiative, leaving no one behind in the journey towards complete immunization. By addressing low performing areas, urban slums, and migratory populations, This mission plays a pivotal role in fostering a healthier and resilient nation. At the heart of Poxo lies the profound recognition that child abuse takes various forms. It encompasses physical and emotional ill-treatment, sexual abuse, neglect, and commercial exploitation, actions that inflict actual or potential harm on a child's health, survival, development, or dignity. Forms of child abuse Understanding the nuances, let's explore the different forms of child abuse addressed by Poxo. Physical abuse involving any non-accidental physical harm inflicted on the child. Emotional abuse causing emotional harm or disturbance to the child's mental health. Sexual abuse any non-consensual sexual conduct inflicted on the child. Child neglect failure to provide essential care leading to harm or potential harm to the child. punishment of offenses poxo prescribes specific punishments for various offenses to ensure accountability 
let's look at some key provisions. Penetrative Sexual Assault Section 3 Addressing the Gravity of Non-Consensual Penetration Aggravated Penetrative Sexual Assault Section 5 Intensifying Penalties for Aggravated Circumstances Sexual Assault Section 7 Covering a Range of Non-Penetrative Sexual Offenses Aggravated Sexual Assault Section 9 Addressing Aggravated Forms of Non-Penetrative Sexual Offenses Sexual Harassment of the Child Section 11 Recognizing and Penalizing Harassment Use of Child for Pornographic Purposes Section 13 Addressing the Exploitative Use of Children in Pornography OXO stands as a robust legal framework, providing stringent measures to safeguard children from various forms of sexual offenses. By defining and punishing offenses, it contributes significantly to the protection of children's rights and well-being. Let's embark on an exploration of legislative measures aimed at ensuring the safety and empowerment of women and delve into this comprehensive list of acts that contribute to women's safety. Child Marriage Restraint Act 1929 Our journey begins with the Child Marriage Restraint Act of 1929, a landmark legislation aimed at preventing child marriages, recognizing the importance of protecting the rights of young girls. Special Marriage Act 1954 Moving forward, the Special Marriage Act of 1954 provides a legal framework for interfaith and intercaste marriages, offering couples the freedom to choose their life partners without facing societal restrictions. Hindu Marriage Act 1955 The Hindu Marriage Act of 1955 guns Hindu marriages, outlining the rights and responsibilities of spouses within the Hindu community. Dowry Prohibition Act 1961 Addressing a pervasive social issue, the Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961 aims to eradicate the practice of dowry, emphasizing the empowerment of women in marital relationships. Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005 Jumping ahead to more recent times, the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act of 2005 offers legal remedies to women facing domestic abuse, ensuring their safety and well-being. Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act 2013 In the professional sphere, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act of 2013 establishes a framework to address and prevent sexual harassment in work environments. This array of legislation stands as a testament to India's commitment to ensuring the safety, dignity, and empowerment of women. From addressing early marriages to combating domestic violence and workplace harassment, these laws collectively contribute to fostering an environment where women can thrive. Let's delve into a profound societal issue, female feticide. I am your host and explore the causes and consequences of this social evil that has far-reaching implications. Causes of Female Feticide The root causes of female feticide are multifaceted and deeply ingrained in societal norms. Let's examine some of these causes. Extreme desire for a male child, a prevailing cultural preference for male heirs drives families to resort to extreme measures to ensure the birth of a male child. Unwanted pregnancy, social stigma around unwanted pregnancies, especially for female children, contributes to the tragic practice of female feticide. Dowry system, the burden of dowry, a deeply rooted societal issue, adds economic pressure on families, leading to the preference for male offspring. Poor medical ethics, unscrupulous medical practices, including the unethical provision of gender determination services, exacerbate the problem. Inferior status, societal norms that place women in an inferior status contribute to the devaluation of female lives. Effects of female feticide, the consequences of female feticide reverberate through various aspects of society. Let's explore these effects. Reduced sex ratio, the immediate impact is seen in a skewed sex ratio with a notable disparity such as 914 females for every 1,000 males. Female trafficking, the shortage of females due to feticide creates a demand, leading to an increase in human trafficking, 
particularly affecting poor and young girls. Legal consequences to counter this heinous practice, legal actions, including high fines and judicial measures, are imposed on parents attempting to terminate female pregnancies. Educational and employment disparities The long-term effects include disparities in education and employment opportunities for girls, perpetuating gender inequality for centuries. Equal rights advocacy Efforts towards achieving equal rights for women in property and within familial structures gain importance as societies grapple with the consequences of feticide. Youth-focused awareness campaigns, recognizing the pivotal role of the youth, targeted awareness campaigns aim to reshape attitudes and values surrounding gender, fostering a more inclusive and equitable society. Female feticide is a complex issue deeply rooted in societal norms. Understanding its causes and effects is essential for crafting comprehensive solutions to eradicate this social evil. Let's navigate through the intricate issue of the dowry system, an age-old societal concern that continues to persist and let's delve into the causes behind this practice and explore measures for prevention. Causes of Dowry System The dowry system is deeply rooted in various aspects of society. Let's examine the causes that contribute to its perpetuation. Economic factors, economic considerations often drive families to view dowry as a financial transaction, creating a monetary burden. Social factors, societal expectations and norms play a significant role, perpetuating the notion that dowry is a customary practice. Religious factors, Misinterpretations of religious customs sometimes contribute to the practice, despite religious teachings discouraging it. Economic inequality Disparities in wealth distribution and economic inequality within society can exacerbate the pressure to give or receive dowry. Increasing unemployment of males Economic challenges, including unemployment among males, can lead families to see dowry as a means of financial security. Parental compulsions, parental expectations and societal pressures compel families to participate in the dowry system. Divine sanctions, erroneous beliefs in divine sanctions may lead some to justify the practice based on perceived religious or cultural obligations. Prevention of dowry Addressing and preventing the dowry system requires a concerted effort. Here are key strategies. Not to offer or accept dowry. Families should consciously refrain from participating in the exchange of dowry, breaking the cycle. Legal awareness, education about existing laws that prohibit giving or accepting dowry is crucial. Understanding the legal ramifications can act as a deterrent. Community education, educating family members and neighbors is vital. Promoting respect for women's rights and privileges helps change societal attitudes. Empowering women. Encouraging women to assert their rights and fight against the imposition of dowry empowers them to challenge this practice. Economic independence. Empowering the girl child to become economically independent is a long-term solution, reducing the financial dependency that often leads to dowry demands. Strict law enforcement. Stringent law enforcement is imperative to discourage and penalize those involved in the giving or accepting of dowry. The dowry system is a deeply ingrained social issue, but concerted efforts through education, legal awareness, and empowerment can pave the way for its eradication. Let's address a pressing concern that affects communities globally, drug abuse and trafficking and together we explore the intricacies of drug abuse and the imperative preventive measures that society must undertake. Drug abuse Drug abuse, a critical health issue, refers to the consumption of substances that are neither approved nor supervised by medical professionals. This includes the misuse of substances like steroids for performance enhancement in sports, constituting a perilous form of drug abuse. Preventive and Remedial Measures To combat drug abuse and trafficking, a multi-pronged approach is essential. Let's examine key preventive and remedial measures. Government-led awareness campaigns, the government must leverage all forms of media to propagate against the habit of drug-taking. 
Public awareness is vital in preventing the initiation of drug abuse. Role of voluntary organizations Voluntary organizations play a crucial role. They should focus on instructing addicts on how to give up these harmful habits, guiding them back to mainstream public life without shame or sorrow. Physicians' role in education Physicians should actively participate in educating individuals about the consequences of drug abuse. Providing guidance on how to prevent and avoid the pitfalls of drug addiction is paramount. Parental involvement Parents play a pivotal role. Their care, attention, and love are essential in creating a supportive environment that discourages drug abuse among their sons and daughters. Moral and religious guidance Encouraging the reading of moral and religious books can provide individuals struggling with addiction with valuable insights, fostering a sense of purpose and direction. Fearless law enforcement The police must act fearlessly against individuals involved in drug trafficking. Stringent law enforcement is critical to dismantling the networks that perpetuate the drug trade. Addressing drug abuse and trafficking requires a collaborative effort from society. Through awareness, education, and strict law enforcement, we can strive towards a future where communities are free from the devastating impact of drug abuse. Let's delve into what HIV AIDS is, how it spreads, and dispel some common misconceptions. What is HIV AIDS? HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, is a formidable virus that progressively weakens the body's immune system leaving it susceptible to various diseases. As the virus advances, it can lead to AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, a condition where the body's weakened natural defense mechanism and immunity are severely compromised. How does HIV AIDS spread? Understanding the modes of transmission is crucial in preventing the spread of HIV AIDS. Let's explore these. Sexual Transmission Unprotected sexual intercourse is a significant mode of transmission. Blood transfusions, the virus can be transmitted through contaminated blood, emphasizing the importance of safe blood transfusions. Sharing needles and syringes, intravenous drug use, especially when individuals share needles, poses a high risk of transmission. Mother-to-child transmissions, during childbirth or breastfeeding, there is a risk of the virus being passed from an infected mother to her child. Other methods, skin piercing, certain practices involving skin piercing can carry a risk if instruments are not adequately sterilized. Oral route, while the risk is lower, certain oral activities can transmit the virus. HIV cannot be transmitted by. It's important to dispel some common misconceptions about how HIV cannot be transmitted. Contrary to some beliefs, the virus cannot be transmitted through Shaking hands, casual contact like shaking hands does not pose a risk. Sharing clothes, sharing clothes, an everyday activity, does not carry a risk of transmission. Sharing of food and utensils, routine activities like sharing food and utensils are not modes of transmission. Sharing toilets Using the same toilet as an infected person does not pose a risk. Insect bites. Insects do not transmit the virus. Hugging or kisses. Affectionate gestures like hugging or kissing are safe. Working or traveling together. Daily activities like working together or traveling in the same vehicle do not transmit HIV. Playing or swimming together. Engaging in recreational activities poses no risk. Cuffing or sneezing. Everyday actions like coughing or sneezing do not spread the virus. Routine patient care activities. Activities like bed making or feeding a patient are not modes of transmission. Understanding the transmission methods and dispelling misconceptions is crucial in preventing the spread of HIV AIDS. Education and awareness play a pivotal role in fostering a supportive and informed community. As we conclude our exploration today, it's essential to reflect on the significance of the topics discussed. From combating social evils to safeguarding women's rights, addressing drug abuse, and understanding the complexities of health issues like HIV AIDS, our journey has been both enlightening and thought-provoking. Remember, 
knowledge is a powerful tool and our collective efforts towards awareness education and compassion can drive positive change in society let's continue to strive for a world where understanding empathy and informed actions create a brighter and more equitable future for all thank you for joining us on this insightful journey until next time stay informed stay engaged and make a positive impact in your communities